Today, I'm gonna tell you guys about my favorite Black African American. Black African American. Wait, don't click away. Like and subscribe first. Come back. Come. A slave named Billy. Billy's real name is lost to the sands of time, but Billy was convicted for treason because he fought for the British. Get ready for the British. During the Revolutionary War, he sided with them der redcoats. Oh, it's the redcoats. That's what I mean. I can't blame him too much, cuz, you know. I'm sure it hasn't taken you long to understand the implications. But Billy made the argument that slaves aren't American citizens. Therefore, fighting for the British during the Revolutionary War? Not treason, because only American citizens can commit treason. It's treason, then. And guess who agreed with him? Thomas Slave Owning Jefferson. Yes, that Thomas Jefferson. He was pardoned by then Governor of Virginia, Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson resigned this morning. Hey, quick question. When I do this, do I look like a thumb? Just, just curious. Lawrence C. Jones. The C stands for cash money. That's cash money! He was a black educator that was almost lynched in 1919 while on his way to teach poor black students. Apparently, he put all his skill points into speech and charisma because when some evil white people gathered together to lynch Lawrence, he persuaded them with his love of teaching. And maybe a dash of razzle dazzle. And how much the black community needed him, which somehow worked. Bazinga. But before the angry white mob let him go on his way, they did one more thing to Mr. Lawrence. They passed a hat around to collect money for him to support his teaching efforts. Here comes the money. Here we go. Oh, that was nice. I'm sure that's how most lynchings ended. <laughs> right? Right? Right, 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 right. right? Daryl Davis, almost as cool as Daryl Dixon. He was a traveling black musician who befriended a local KKK chapter in Maryland. But Maryland was where things started to turn for me. Daryl thought to himself, the only reason these white men don't like blacks is because they have never had a black friend. I have black friends. The KKK ended up liking him so much they disbanded their chapter so they could continue to be friends with this black man. A black man used his power of friendship to successfully end a chapter of the KKK. Speaking of the KKK, <laughs> a franchisee of Krispy Kreme in England one time advertised the Krispy Kreme Club but he spelled club with a K. Ah, oh, whoops. Because he was completely unaware that the KKK was a domestic terrorist group in America many years ago. <laughs> Awkward marketing fail. Why aren't these three black men known better? There are plenty more black Americans we should celebrate here in February instead of people like George Floyd. George Floyd, he had an alternative monetary policy that the government really didn't like in case you somehow didn't know who he was. Dog life! Lonnie Johnson. He was an aerospace engineer. Captain of the Nerd Squad. Who invented the super soaker whilst working for NASA. He did this while working on a cooling system that used water instead of Freon. <laughs> Drink Freon, kids. Now that's good advice. In the process of building his invention, it accidentally squirted water across the room, and then a light bulb went off. This would make a much better squirt gun than currently exists. And he was 100% right. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. He also invented what we now know as the Nerf gun. This man and his toy guns played a major role in my childhood and I am forever grateful for his inventions. This is a real gun. Um, I've never learned how to use a shotgun. My time in the army, I learned how to learn and qualified in every weapon system there was, except a shotgun. But I live in a state where you basically don't need any kind of permits or permission to own guns. Burst and America pilled. So I kind of, I kind of just have this. Eventually, I'm gonna watch a YouTube video on how to unload it because it is chambered. <laughs> Yolo. Just a little joke. Robert Smalls. He stole a Confederate ship during the Civil War. He was one of the lucky slaves. I don't think that word means what you think it means. That had a slave wife and a slave child. But he was worried that one day his family would be split up and sold off to different owners, which was common. So one night while the white crew was off the ship getting drunk, YOLO, am I right guys? He got out the other slaves on board to steal the ship. He had to get from South Carolina to somewhere up north Anywhere but here. where they could be free. The big problem was selling through a Confederate blockade. 
Thankfully, the other Confederate forts were lazy. <laughs> That's relatable. By simply wearing a captain's jacket and using the code book left on board, he was able to properly signal each fort as their ship passed by, and the Confederates were none the wiser until he made his way into freedom. Did you guys see the spit that came off? I didn't see nothing. He didn't stop there. He was able to convince the Union Army to let Black serve in the army and fight the Confederates. See, the ship he stole had a lot of weapons on board and he turned it over to the Union, which made him kind of famous. After the war, he was able to use the fame from stealing a Confederate ship to make his way into political office where he was able to help pass many civil rights bills that granted freedoms to his people that he didn't have when he was born. And that's how it's done. That would actually make a good movie. Let's, do, let's make one of those. Gladys West. People like to credit Gladys West with inventing the GPS. Gladys West didn't actually invent GPS. It was invented by two white men. But Gladys played a pivotal role in helping to create the framework that would be used to make GPS a reality. Noise. The Navy literally sought her out for an engineering job because she refused to apply. Why didn't she apply for the Navy job? Because <laughs> the building she needed to apply in was too hard to find, so she gave up. It's not like she had GPS to aid her. But then the Navy was like, no ma'am, don't worry, we'll come to you. And they literally showed up to her house and offered her the job, which she then accepted. We'll accept the promotion. She's one of the women that movie Hidden Fingers was inspired by. Just a little side note, not once in her entire life did she ever use GPS. She didn't like something she made possible and I find this hilarious. George Washington Carver. You probably know him as the guy who invented peanut butter but he didn't actually invent peanut butter. What he did invent was so much better. I would love to make more long form videos, but my wife decided that we needed a bird. And so now it's really hard to film because every time I come in here, he knows I'm in here and he starts chirping. No matter how good your wife is at sucking D, don't ever let her talk you into getting a bird. It will be the worst decision of your life. He does this for hours. You guys think it's annoying when you hear it in my videos? Try hearing it in person every day of your life. I'm not going crazy, you're going crazy. We're just gonna take a little George's being a nightmare break. He goes for hours and you have no idea how hard it is to not strangle this bird. I'm against animal abuse, but every time he starts going, I'm 1% less opposed to it. <laughs> Do you know birds live for like 80 years? George is probably gonna outlive me. We don't actually know how old he is. Okay, George, say hi, YouTube. The reason why George Washington Carver actually invented so many uses for peanuts because it was a better crop to grow. It was a healthier crop for the soil to grow. You can get quicker turnover. You grow, there's just a million reasons Suspect. to farm peanuts instead of something like cotton. And because so many of his fellow black Americans were trapped in what was basically indentured servitude, if they use peanuts, they can make more money and live a better life. And so that's why he was hell-bent on making so many uses for peanuts so that Americans would have more reason to buy peanut products. And so of the things he didn't invent, peanut butter is somehow attached to his name and what he's famous for, and I'll never understand why. Peanut butter. But what George Washington Carver actually did is quite amazing, and he should definitely get a biopic made about him. George, are you done? Barack Hussein Obama saving the worst for last. I mean, when was the last time you seen Barack Obama do something for us? Why is Barack Obama one of my favorite black Americans? Well, the answer is simple. He proved black people are just as bad at being president as white people. If you've seen some of my other videos and posts, you might get the idea that I'm somehow racist and confuses why I would make a video like this. Somehow criticizing blacks makes you racist, which makes total sense. Plot twist, I have two black brothers. Do you honestly think I want what's worst for my black brothers? That I don't want what's best for my fellow Americans just because some of them are a different race? Well, if you're left wing, the answer is definitely gonna be yes. I've been on the internet for more than two days. 
We have a serious problem in America. Despite making up only 13% of the population, black Americans commit over half of all murders in this country. Am I not allowed to complain about that? Am I not allowed to bring attention to that? And I know crime stats, they're racist, but these FBI crime stats I'm showing, do you have any idea how the FBI gets those numbers? The FBI contacts every police department and every sheriff's office and asks them for their local crime stats. So when every single city and every single county in America reports that blacks disproportionately commit violent crimes, like murder, am I to believe that racism should be blamed? Every single local police agency is just racist and lies about the murder rate of black Americans. That's what some people honestly choose to believe. Most crime in America is intra-racial. When someone is murdered, it's almost always someone of their own race committing that crime. And what we see here is that most blacks who are murdered are murdered by someone of their own race. How is it that whites outnumber blacks six to one and not only do they commit more murders in total than whites do, they're killing mostly members of their own race. But blacks also kill twice as many whites as whites kills blacks. More whites live in this country than blacks and yet they still kill us more than we kill them. How is that even possible? Why does mainstream news ignore this? How am I racist for wanting to talk about this? Are we just supposed to ignore this problem? Most people do want to just ignore it. Am I not supposed to worry about what might happen to my black brothers? And then when we look at victim crime survey data, what it shows is that again, even though whites outnumber blacks six to one, they rob us and assault us almost 10 times more than we rob and assault them. I wish I could use my platform to bring light to this serious crime issue without people just assuming I'm racist or that my motivation is hating black people. So I honestly don't know what to do. Maybe making this video and talking about my black brothers will convince some that I don't hate black people when I talk about the crime that some black people commit. When I complain about white people, I don't get accused of hating my own race. When I complain about America, I don't get accused of hating America. So I hope at least the people watching this video don't think I hate black people when I complain about them in other videos or some of the problems within the black community. Most Americans are good and that includes black Americans. Just a side note, this photo was taken during Halloween, but I wasn't wearing a Halloween costume. I just happened to bring my back in both arms close to Halloween, but that's a story for another time.